Welcome back, panelists here, NBC News Chief Washington Correspondent and the Chief Foreign Affairs Correspondent, Andrea Mitchell. Jake Sherman, the co-founder of Punchbowl News, former Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson, and longtime Republican strategist Sarah Fagan. Welcome to all of you. All right. Um, let me play uh, a little bit of what happened to Mitch McConnell earlier this week. What are your thoughts on running for re-election in 2026? What are my thoughts about what? Running for re-election in 2026. Oh. That's good. That would go on for another about 15 seconds. Jake Sherman, just after that moment, National Review came out, called for him to step down. Everybody comes back this week. I imagine this Senate Republican lunch is going to be the most important McConnell's had in a while. I think that's right. Uh, Listen, McConnell world is very locked down, even in best of times, so we don't really have a good idea. I'm not a doctor. We're not physicians. But a few things are clear. Number one, Senate Republicans are worried. I mean, this is all the talk of Senate Republican uh, leadership and rank and file right now. Um, They wonder whether he'll last the year in the Senate. I think that's something I've heard incessantly over the last couple days. Mm -hmm. He can't really afford to have another one of these episodes in public. But listen, I talked to people who were with him the night this, you know, after this happened, and they said he was fine. He was energized. He was Mm -hmm. on point. He was really sharp. Sarah Fagan, his, this feels like, you know, House conservatives don't like him, right? He has this unique thing that he makes both the left and the right mad uh, on this front. Does that add to some political pressure on him? Well, I I think certainly makes him a little bit more of a target. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I appreciate the the comment that he can't afford one more of these episodes in public. But we have a president who's had also had episodes Mm -hmm. where he's gotten confused on stage and nobody is saying the president can't afford one more of these episodes. Oh, I think a lot of people are saying that, actually, but that's okay. I think, look, we have to... Be careful not to conflate age with a recovery. Mm -hmm. And yes, Mitch McConnell is older, but he had a concussion. And the the medical community appears to be saying that this can be a natural, Mm -hmm. you know, issue when somebody's recovering from a concussion. So nobody cares about the Senate more than Mitch McConnell. I'm confident if he's able to serve, he'll be serving. Yeah, I, agree. I think the the only person more concerned Mm -hmm. about his future is Joe Biden because the future of a government potential shutdown, of any kind of agreement. It's Mitch McConnell who has been saying openly to the House that he didn't agree to their spending levels, that they had uh, changed from the previous budget Mm -hmm. agreement. So Mitch McConnell is the key to any kind of bipartisan action up there. But I think, in fairness, I don't think it's age or the concussion. In reading what the neurologists are saying, and admittedly they haven't examined him, but from a lot of symptoms that they see in his eyes and in the way he responded. He, need, he does need medical help because recurrent, if it's a seizure or a, a small stroke, a TIA, you need help in order to, there, there's medication. Mm-hmm. But this yeah. kind of high pressure job is not the place, Gee. not the way to go. 1998, my first Senate confirmation hearing before the Senate Armed Services Committee was chaired by 96-year-old Strom Thurmond. Mm-hmm. Uh, who How'd worked, that go? It, it worked, he worked entirely off of index cards, and when he wandered off the index card, everybody in the room would hold their breath. <clears throat> the reality was he was carried by his staff and by his Senate colleagues in a different time and place. Now, in the Senate, in the White House, there are just far too many cameras or far too many iPhones, and it, it's difficult to hide your age. And every, and every time the, the McConnell issue comes up, yeah. people talk about Biden's age in the same story. And that Oh, versus... every McConnell moment is terrible politics for Biden. Right. But, so let me just add one thing. I, I have a lot of interactions with Mitch McConnell. He is as... Sh- I don't see any slippage mentally from Mitch McConnell. I mean, he's a sharp... So these are clearly and, incidents. And, and, these and are people, mo- moments in time. And his mm-hmm. leader, his, the staff around him says that, yeah. you know, that he is as sharp as he was. His yeah. schedule in August was the same as it was last year. But so, I'm curious, yeah. do you think there's going to be political pressure that, hey, we want to make this an issue on Biden, so we can't let McConnell be there? I think they're going to make an issue with Biden in any case. They have no reluctance in doing that. Sure, but I sort, of, I, I sort of compare it equivalent to, like, when... Why did Al Franken get thrown under the bus when he got thrown under the bus? Because of the special election yeah. timing, political timing sometimes. There, there, I things. think that's a good point by some conservatives who have no love loss for Mitch McConnell. Right. That it becomes a, a convenient argument. But it, it doesn't make it right. The more it comes from Marjorie yeah. Taylor Greene, the better it is for him in the Senate. Because there is so much resentment right. in the Senate against agree with that. any House yeah. criticism. Listen, McConnell has <clears throat> an unusually strong grip on the Senate Republican Conference. He survived a very 
lame, I would say, yeah. challenge from Rick Scott. 16 people voted against him. He has the support of his people. All right, let's talk about this idea. Can Speaker McCarthy effectively use impeachment to keep the government open? Sarah, <laughs> it's an interesting... <laughs> and I feel like he's gotten caught <clears throat> doing this now, and it's like, it's kind of an open secret that that's what he's trying to pull off here. Is that possible? Well, I think look, he has been incredibly effective. You know, you just think back to his election and Bar all... Bar was the, low, but he has surpassed But no, yeah. all the difficult sure. circumstances, you know, in the course of his speakership where he has figured out how to move the caucus forward and how to move the country forward. And so I, I have a lot of confidence he will figure that out. I, I, look, I think there is growing concern, legitimate concern around what happened in Hunter Biden's business dealings and what connection did it have to the current president? Mm -hmm. And now there's, you know, a big trove of emails released that, you know, appear to be, you know, by a pseudonym. Like, an impeachment investigation doesn't necessarily, necessarily mean an impeachment. Right. But because there are so many unanswered questions, it's a reasonable uh, step to take. I'm sorry, that's an impeachment inquiry in search of a crime. That's not what mm -hmm. impeachment is for. Nixon was Watergate, Clinton was Monica Lewinsky, mm -hmm. Trump was Ukraine, then January 6th. If we're moving to a world where we conduct impeachment inquiries simply to find a crime, that's a poor place I, to be. I don't disagree with you, but we have a problem at the Justice Department where it doesn't appear to be independent. And you, you kind of look at the fact pattern of, you know, the plea deal that fell apart and you, you start to, you know, have whistleblowers inside the government who are raising questions about... Uh, you know, uh, justice officials. Mm -hmm. And so what is a House Republican caucus mm -hmm. supposed to do to, to I, get I answers? I assure you, Merrick yeah. Garland is yeah. very independent. So, Jake, where does it, how does this, well, how does you, this get a resolved? Few things. Number one, the government's going to shut down at some point between now and the end of the year. I think that's a near certainty. Number two, uh, if they open an impeachment inquiry, which I believe they will, they will impeach Biden. They're not going to open an inquiry and then... Because it's, it, it, weirdly enough, once they go down this road, it would be worse politics for them with the base if they didn't do it. They've never been without a vote. Right. They always vote when there's an impeachment. Well, he has Except now said Nixon there's going to be a vote. He, so Don know, Bacon's right. got a vote, right? I mean... I, I don't think they have the votes for an impeachment inquiry right, right. now. I don't. And, and number three, just really quickly, if the government shuts down, yeah. they could still impeach him. I, I think th it's a false equivalency, McCarthy. Jay, maintained. you're here, and I want to take advantage of the fact that we had some headlines over the weekend that the migrant... Uh, uh, right. uh, <clears throat> Yeah. At the border, the, there's been a surge. Uh, a lot of families crossing with kids. It's triple than what it was. It was sort of like because the first two weeks went well, yeah. they thought they were in the clear. Right. Not so much. Um, the, yes, we got a break in May, but the surge that we see now is bound to happen. You, I'm sure, heard me say dozens of times now that illegal immigration on our southern border reacts sharply and quickly to perceived changes in our enforcement policy. Yeah. But as long as the underlying push factors persist, the numbers are always going to revert back to their longer-term trend lines. Here we are, and it will become a political football as well. Thank you, guys. Appreciate this. Thanks for watching. Stay updated about breaking news and top stories on the NBC News app or follow us on social media.